hello everyone. It's nice to be here. And today I'm going um, well uh, to go into the other aspect of the board game industry, which is which are communities. Of course, basically the most important thing of what we are. And uh, I'm going to show you an example of a local board game community, which is functioning like a model of community, which is uh, functioning in south of Lithuania. And also after that, I will go a little bit deeper and we'll try to touch upon uh, how these local board commun game communities can impact the board game culture itself. And also you will get to know, uh, well, the first Lithuanian board game convention and first the only board game convention, which is called Pinecom. So uh, let's uh, try to switch uh, the slides. And uh, well, about me. Uh, you, well, I'm marketing specialist, educator, and event organizer. Also, you can find me in different kind of situations and jobs. For example, speaking at various uh, game board game industry festivals. Well, it's the first one actually. And uh, since uh, 2021, I was working for Brain Games as a marketing specialist. But what is like the most important to mention from my experience in this case of presentation? Well, I'm also a president of uh, Druskinki Board Game Club Association and non-formal education teacher of of, uh, board Game Academy class, uh, also the main organizer of uh, Pinecon Convention, and also it's important to mention my background in a youth work, because from 2016 till 2020 I was also a youth worker and uh, youth coordinator and part of National Youth Coordinator Association of Lithuania. So, um, well, you will see why. Uh, because, well, youth work and youth workers and youth centers are very important in this, well, model of uh, local board game communities. So let me, like, present uh, how it works in the South Lithuania in the town of, of Druskininke. Well, town of Druskininke is like, um, well, it's similar to Jurmala, but just divided by four, and there is no sea. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of how it is, but it's a very beautiful city, obviously. And, well, there is, like, the first part of uh, institution, which is, like, school, where you get formal education. But also, well, youngsters after school, they can, like, choose uh, another different activities, like one is uh, for free, and there is, uh, among all the choices, there is one, which is non-formal education class, Board Game Academy. So this is the place where uh, those youngsters go, and, uh, well, they are kind of introduced to board games, and we kind of avoid that situation where, for example, you want to introduce, introduce person to hobby, and he comes there, and he sees like full table of miniatures, lots of dices, and well, maybe he thinks it's not for me. So they are kind of introduced to hobby there. They play simple games, and uh, if they're interested, and usually they are, uh, they are going to the board game club, which is like in the center of this whole model. And also, they are telling their friends about it. And uh, after that, we can we we have people, uh, youngsters, co coming from school to the board game club. And also, we have youth center, which is a very important uh, part of this, like all model, because uh, well, um, we are based in board uh, in youth center, and basically, some people, some youngsters, after school, they are going uh, there, and they are coming to the well club afterwards. And also there's another part of adult gamers and uh, we are particip participating in volunteering um, uh, projects as well. And the output of this model is, well, there are a lot of outputs, but well, the Pinecon, the board game convention is one of them. What is important to mention in this case that, well, to form a board game community is kind of difficult in, well, there are a lot of obstacles when you do it in like small city. Well, first of all is location. Uh, second one is like the board game hobby is still, well, is well, growing popular obviously, but it's still niche and a small city, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's still alienated at some, at some point and it's kind of, um, well, there are challenges there. Uh, so you have to have like this kind of, uh, you know, functioning model which kind of, fuels your roots, fuels your roots, like in, we will speak in board game terms and we will uh, use some board game names, I think, in this presentation. Uh, and, uh, well, I speaking from that perspective, I just presented like the uh, non-formal uh, education and how it like impacts uh, the uh, board game uh, communities and local board communities. Uh, 
there are board game clubs in Lithuania. They're kind of centered in uh, the major cities. And uh, for example, Rick is, his, uh, it has like sub-communities uh, like, for example, war gamers communities and so on, uh, role-playing game communities. Uh, in this, uh, well, era of, of COVID, uh, when COVID happened, basically, um, we kind of feel uh, that uh, we have like uh, little sparks growing like all around Lithuania and little communities of board game people they are forming here. And on the right, you can see, well, the map of youth centers and open youth areas in Lithuania. And basically what I wanted to show you that, well, there is whole power grid over there, like uh, which is like supported by, uh, well, youth department and there is like same situation, well, a little bit differently, but in other countries, in Latvia and Estonia. And uh, well, there's whole power grid speaking in board game terms. And when you go and you can make a spark and well, the beautiful things start to happen. And I think uh, there is like a major and uh, very, very big opportunity there to, especially in the, you know, post COVID era to, to make great things there as it happens like in, in our case, I believe in our, well, uh, local board game community. So um, let me also tell about our humble beginnings and milestones of our board game club. And basically it started in 2016 and it formed in that youth center. And after that, uh, we made a, well, a project with our youth center, which was called Game Pandemic. So it was not us who spread the virus, but uh, we were trying uh, to spread the virus of board games in a case that we went to the uh, youth centers and schools and well we were presenting like the board games as a hobby and why it is so amazing uh, after that we became official the first pinecon was born and the pinecon uh, since 2017 there are already five uh, pinecon board game conventions which is the only and um, well board game convention in lithuania um, also, there are like some other things to mention, but I'm going to the PineCon itself, which is, which is kind of every year we are trying to uh, not only present like the newest games of uh, Lithuanian uh, board game community, but we also want to take a look at the hobby from different perspectives. For example, well, uh, we are also showing. Uh, uh, like the tabletop uh, side of it, we are kind of showing that it's like great for all ages as well. It's kind of trying to uh, see the board gaming culture uh, from all different perspectives and all different uh, kinds of opportunities. So, speaking of that, um, as I have presented the model if, in Druskininke of local board game community, now I will speak about uh, what kind of impact those local communities have to, well, their communities, their cities, basically. So first of all, uh, when the model of, uh, well, board game community functions successfully, it gives tremendous impact of, uh, of, uh, on, on local community, for example. Well, we can speak about non-formal education. So a board game club, uh, well, board gaming hobby itself, it touches upon all the aspects of non-formal education skills, for example, well, personal skills, communication skills, learning to learn, which is another important skill as well. So it also has positive impact of mental health. It kind of, well, it builds bridges between different social groups and, and also enriches cultural life because, well, as we can see from the photos, uh, the activities we do, it's kind of, it goes from social deduction games to, well, painting, activities to, uh, well, role-playing, uh, wargaming, and so on, and so on. So it kind of, in those local communities, which are usually uh, impacted a lot from, uh, especially in the post-COVID era and during the COVID, uh, when life is not like, uh, you know, really active and there is usually nothing to do for youngsters, especially like those, uh, you know, things which are usually there, uh, one of the things which uh, struck me most, actually, that uh, there was a survey among uh, young people, and uh, uh, it was done like during, uh, well, already it was like half a year after pandemic start, I think, maybe even more. And the underlying theme here was, there was that, uh, you know, 
they were battling the fear of failure all the time. I mean, when the youngsters, they have like uh, this detachment, detachment from, the, from the school, from, uh, you know, having online lessons and so on. Uh, there is uh, so much uncertainty like we all have during this uh, difficult time. So uh, there was a quote, uh, there was a question, like the youngsters were asked about uh, what kind of things they would like to have in their like uh, educational uh, you know, field, and uh, they said, well, cool learning experiences. And I was thinking, but, you know, board games, they are all about this, you know. In board games, when you play, when you're trying to solve uh, creatively different kind of uh, situations, different kind of outcomes, well, basically, you are battling that fear of failure, and you, and you can overcome it. And I see many, many examples of youngsters doing that and overcoming that. And also, this is like a cool learning experience as well. Uh, so, in this like new reality which we are right now, uh, in the chaos in the new world, in, in, this, in this case, uh, these local uh, board game communities and communities themselves, they are playing a tremendous impact. Uh, and I could say that they are like a local, uh, like a cornerstone of board game culture because uh, when we reopen societies, uh, these local communities, they tend to, well, to go into their hobbies, uh, rediscover their hobbies, uh, find uh, new ones. And this feeling of that the attachment, uh, which kind of struck us uh, during the pandemic times, it was again found in those local communities uh, where we can like keep uh, our social, uh, you know, level of, of being and we can reconnect with society through such well, communities. And um, what else are there to say about this? As you can see, um, when we have like successfully functioning local board game community, it not even enriches the city life itself, but it gives the output to the board game culture, like with a board game convention. And I think in future events, with all the shift on opportunities, uh, they are changing, obviously. We have different kind of uh, events and these local sub-communities which are sparkling all over the place. I think uh, the shift is happening right there. And all we need to do as, uh, well, one of our main goals as our you know, board game industry um, people, we have to go there and we have to make that spark and there will be like our, you know, the fire of uh, <laughs> board game uh, love there, actually. So uh, that's probably the main things I wanted to present you. Also, if you have any questions. Yes, please, questions. Yep. Yep. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, can you can you give some numbers? Maybe it's quite interesting because we saw the youth centers. But how many people do you get uh, like in a regular day or week or months? And how many people did attend the PineCon? Because it seems uh, quite a lot of uh, places in uh, in the Lithuania, and I envy you because I feel that in Latvia it's not that great of a situation for us. But but yeah, what about numbers? Well, that's a usual question when, when we have about uh, our event and about the number of people. I think now we will have like a third generation of youngsters who will be coming to our board game club through the board game class. So basically, uh, like when you speak like the whole uh, mini community, we have like 15, 20 people over there. Uh, and which is like active, but after that we have like situation when they are going uh, out well to universities to study, and they are doing some great things there. But uh, after that they come back to their local city, they come back to events, so they are kind of already not there, but still the part of like the growing community. So I would say, uh, 15, 20 people who are like uh, 
at the heart of uh, which uh, that local community who volunteers, who uh, helps in events, who well do this all amazing stuff. Speaking about the numbers of convention, well, it's uh, not huge and it's. Uh, probably not supposed to be this way as I was presented in, well, about, I was talking about uh, shifting uh, shape of events and, and uh, what is coming in near future for us in board game industry. But, uh, well, this year we had around 100 people. We had to change the concept. Uh, uh, well, because of the COVID, we did that outside. And uh, usually there is like 150, 200 people coming over there. So um, the thing is the potential, um, like the previous speakers were talking about uh, like uh, amazing uh, spark uh, which gives like imagination to young people and uh, uh, like it was mentioned uh, when you kind of when you're trying to pitch the game which is about education never mention education <laughs> it's i completely agree with this because we have uh, two different fields like uh, in, in board game world there are educational games there are modern games uh, modern board games and uh, then there is like tremendous, I don't know, hole between them usually because educational games we used to sit on the shelves and gather dust most of the times because we are speaking about educational side. But sometimes, and I think that's the way to go, the miracles uh, happening, not miracles because it's like the, the impact of, uh, you know, growing board game world and mechanics and like, like Wings, Wingspan, for example. Uh, it's an amazing example of how STEM-inspired uh, education can be put into the board game as a perfect example of how well, how great game me mechanics work. And it, it's a great game. It's fun to play. And there is so much educational potential there. We, we, we don't have to mention it, we, but, but it's there. And I think uh, a little bit analogy there uh, between local uh, board game com uh, communities and, and board game culture is a little bit the same because, uh, uh, well, in those communities we never speak that uh, board games teaches something to us. We play them. But when you see the results, when you see the young person who comes there and he is like shy and he holds like his head like that and hands like, uh, like this, and after that, you know, from all social addiction games, from all role-playing games, when he uh, rediscover himself in the community, which, by the way, all of us, we need to do in this kind of, you know, uh, post-pandemic uh, world. We need to, to rediscover ourselves in the new social level. Um, that uh, little miracle happens there. And I think if we kind of, with all the opportunities in the youth field, which uh, is supported by well, youth department and they're looking for new opportunities, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a great possibility for modern board games. And I think uh, we really need to look into what's happening in local communities and little sparks over there. Do we have questions? Yes. Uh, hi, Jozes. Uh, I wanted to ask about the commercial side of, of these communities, uh, how uh, uh, because obviously I feel like there are uh, publishers and companies who are willing to uh, advertise their, their games and uh, support these, uh, these communities. How, how competitive is this space and how are these partnerships uh, formed? Well, you see, uh, that's another thing. Like the local communities, we do, have, do not have that side of uh, kind of, they are not biased to uh, like anyone. They do not belong to any like company and so on. Uh, we are just there, and usually we didn't have like any problems without like uh, contacting uh, all the local companies uh, and and local board game creators. We are just there, and they are willing to willing to come and uh, willing to well, they see opportunity and uh, they come here. And I I don't think there is uh, like lots of competition over there because uh, well, it's open for all for everyone basically. Of course, in the future, uh, you know, uh, speaking about the growth, uh, it might uh, grow into another like beautiful thing or whatever. And and uh, uh, the topic, uh, which the question which you asked, may ar may arise. But uh, you know, so far it's uh, it's a local community, a local uh, space where you can. Um, uh, kind of show your things, present your creations, and uh, when it has such a strong impact on the local community itself, like on the city, 
it has like multiplying effect. So basically, local community works as a multiplier, and you know the ripples are spreading to the to the city itself. And so, well, that's uh, that's all here. I mean, the amazing things happen. Do we have more questions? No. Everything was clear. Okay. Thank you very much, Josus, for your presentation. Small present from Latvia, not very far from Lithuania, it's just bordering. <laughs>